Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special, special, special edition of the Alta. I'm your host, Marco the Alta Peralta, and unfortunately, Gil can't be with us tonight. He has some things he have to take care of, so we're going to miss him, but we're going to see him again on Thursday. And a quick shout out to our sponsor before we get the show started once again, the Politaqueria. Visit them at either location, 1573 West Main Avenue in El Centro, inside the Valley Plaza, or even at 1101 Pauline Avenue in Calexico. For the best tacos, tortas, burritos, and micheladas in the Imperial Valley, without a doubt, go to the Poli Taqueria. And also, another sponsor we want to give a quick shout out to is Floor Expressions 760 222 7897 or IVFloorExpressions.com for all your flower needs. Go to the best, and that's Ivy Floor Expressions. So today we have a great, great guest. He is a UNLV commit, and he's really excited to have him to be on the show, but I'm more excited to have him on the show. And it's Daniel Caloca from Brawley, a graduate from Brawley, and now he's in UNLV. He's currently in Las Vegas. So without further ado, let's introduce Daniel Caloca. Also, don't forget, share this video or any questions or comments, put them down in the comment section for Daniel. Okay, so now let's give a little quick drum roll. I wish I had it, but here's Daniel Caloca. Let's see him. What's up? What's, What's up, up, dude? How you doing, my man? I'm doing great. Well, bro, it's good to see you, man. And this show is long overdue, without a doubt, man. It's long overdue, but I'm just glad that you're finally here on the show. It's a huge pleasure and a huge honor to be on for you to be on here, man. Like it's it's a great honor, bro. Thank you for having me. So, man, I, I before we talked on the show, you're currently over there in Las Vegas already, right? In your apartment, correct? Yes, sir. So how's that going on? Like because we know that quarantine is going pretty crazy, and I thought you probably would still be in Brawley, but you're in Las Vegas now. How's how's the weather? Or just how is it over there in, in Vegas uh, right now? Well, let's know. I, I arrived here around June 19th. I got into Las Vegas, so I've been here for quite a while already. And like honestly, in my opinion, I feel like the weather is better over here, even though it's the same, like pretty much same degrees, but it's just dry heat over here, so I'm used to it. Um, well, right now it's kind of quiet because because we're all quarantined, so we're all to be separated, and like because of COVID and stuff like that. Okay, so even though it's like some minimal degrees, it kind of feels better. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll give you that. And at the same time, there's a lot of more stuff to do in Vegas. You know, there's a lot of more stuff to do. You know, but if you have any questions, like I said earlier, for Daniel, feel free to put them down in the comment section below. He's one a really really talented young man, a really good person in general as well. And we're just excited for him to be on the show once again. Gil couldn't be with us tonight. We'll see him on Thursday with another coach that's going to be on the show. But here's Daniel Caloca on the Alta from Brawley, UNLV commit and football player. So without further ado, the first question to you, Daniel, is that how does sports make its presence in your life? Like how did it begin for you? Well, the first sport ever actually was basketball. I joined a Parks and Rec team of uh, my seventh grade year. And, you know, I think we, went, we lost one game that year. And so I started just playing basketball. Then after that season, I stopped. So I was trying to join the, the, the middle school team, but that didn't work out. Then my dad actually told me to try football. And knowing me, like, not playing football, so I don't want to hurt anybody, right? <laughs> so at first I was all like, no, nah, I, I don't know about football, dad. He said, just try it out. Just one, he, I think he was telling me that my eighth grade year, he told me to try it out and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, let's see what's, let's see what's happening. Mm. It took off from there. Well, not, I didn't take off from there. It took off my sophomore year. But Okay. Yeah. But even though, like, going into your freshman year in high school, obviously, like, you being in Brawley, mm. did you have any pressure or did would you – did you feel a little bit intimidated knowing that you're going to go into a very historic school that has a very great history in football? Well, not really because I didn't know anything about football at the time. So I, I wasn't even watching the NFL at the time or anything. So, like, it was just the sport I saw, like, people playing. So I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. Then it was my – I moved in Brawley in the sixth grade. And I didn't know anything about Brawley until actually my freshman year of actually playing football, like the historic events and everything like that. So mm -hmm. I, was, I was like, oh, I'm just going to go there, play football, right? Until I find out like some more like history about it, like Mike Muhammad and stuff like that, all those people that made it good. And that's pretty much it. Then so, 
when you tried it, man, like obviously, like you said, you had, knew nothing about football. You didn't, you weren't watching the NFL whatsoever at all. But what was it that made you still kind of want to do it during your freshman year and, and beyond that? Uh, so it's gonna be, it's kind of a little. It's, I'm sorry. We, if it's a long story, go for it, bro. We got time. Don't worry about it. Uh, it actually started off my freshman year. It was people. Well, I was hanging out with my friends stuff like that. were playing football and like practice and stuff like that. Uh, I got hurt. I remember I got hurt, and it was like during Hell Week, and I was sitting out during all Hell Week, and I got I got bored. I was like, man, I really wish I was there practicing with them. And as soon as I came back, I was you know I was huffing and puffing, not in shape, stuff like that. Then it was during. Well, most of the time I was on the sideline because I didn't want to hurt anybody, right? So I was just chilling and like watching games. And I actually, like, actually liked it, like actually watching it. I kind of miss watching it because most of the time now I'm on the field and playing. But like while I was watching it, I was like, this, like I liked it and stuff like that. Then after my freshman year, believe it or not, I did wrestling. I wrestled under Tony Leon and his wrestling crew. And he taught me a lot about football and technique and stuff like that, like hand placement, like wrapping up under like game tackles. So I would like, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Tony Leon for making making me the person I am right now, or well, helping me into the person I am right now. And uh, ever since then, I started progressing in football more often. So I went to my sophomore year not like, because Tony Leon taught me not to care about other people's feelings pretty much. And you need to win, so win. So I brought that same mentality to football. So I entered my sophomore year. I got the – I was starting left tackle, but my, so, my my sophomore year. But then most of the plays were going to the right side. So I moved to right tackle because I was progressing more than other linemen. So I moved to right tackle and then pretty much – I remember it's a my, from there. Yeah, my sophomore year, he scored like 40 plus points to every single team in the Valley to zero. No, I haven't seen some of your highlights, man. And like, obviously, you stick out a lot because you're, you're a big dude. And I'm like, dang, like, I wouldn't like to be a, a lineman, a defensive end on the left side, knowing that there's a right tackle that's just going to clobber me every single snap, you know? But I, I think it's so cool how you went into wrestling. And that basically helped you get into football or get to know football. You know, me and my co-host Gil, we talked about multi-sport athletes a lot and that there was a benefit. And it seems like it got it came for a benefit for you because your coach, Tony Leon, he kind of taught you how to get your arms around people and make sure you make tackles. And yeah. that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. So would you recommend people who like who were outside and like look up to you as a role model? Like, hey, try different sports because you never know what it could teach you. Oh, for sure. I'll, I'll actually tell them to try wrestling out. Like, okay. I see, like, the Bobby Gladiators. And, like, there's people that are wrestling that actually – I personally think that would be actually pretty good at football. But they're wrestling, so they all do is wrestling. Okay. Like, I see some athletes and see some kids and wrestling. I'm like, you just play football. Like, I don't know about that. <laughs> and you kept saying that you didn't want – you were on the sidelines because you didn't want to – hurt anybody you oh, know yeah. uh, was it because of tony leon say don't care about other people's feelings that you're like you know what? i don't care if i hurt anybody or yeah. what was it that made you be like you know what like i stopped caring about hurting people i'm gonna go tackle someone no matter what happens to them yeah because then uh, in wrestling you know people actually try to like get you back i like, hurt you back right mm -hmm. so i was like pretty much defending myself in wrestling so i carried that mindset to football and it was me against the person in front of me and i'll have to win that battle then to keep winning it. So I just pretty much just pick like wrestling move, pick them up and drop to the floor pretty much. <laughs> okay. So I have more questions, obviously, because we just started the show. Once again, yeah. thank you for coming on. It's Daniel Caloca here on the Alta. And we have a quick shout out from Robert Rodriguez saying, what's up from the Rodriguez family? Big, giving a big what's up to you. And we have a question. I'm pretty sure it's a family member because it's Christina Caloca saying, how does it feel to start somewhere big? Talking about UNLV. It feels great, especially for my family, because I'm the first one ever to play a collegiate sport. And well, in broadly history too, as as most of us are not really getting to the college level, pretty much actually Division One level. Last one I know was was Casey Klein last year or well, last season, and 
it feels great. It's like great accomplishments for me at my school. Like, t- like knowing me, I came from that school. Like, in the middle of nowhere, and I made it somewhere else, somewhere big. No, that's awesome, bro. And like, a lot of people are super proud of you. I'm super proud of you because obviously, it's a someone from the Imper Valley going to represent the Imper Valley. You're going to go represent your family, your high school, and your whole community. So I'm really happy, excited for you about that. And going back to Tony Leone and was there any coaches – and you mentioned your dad earlier that he told you try out football. Was there any coaches or other influential people that made you like, hey, stick to football? Or like when you got into football, they said like, hey, do this, do that to make your make you a better football player? Um, that's, a, that's a loaded question, right? Yeah, it is. Well, Tony Leon helped me a lot. He told me to go back to football. Because at first I was just stick to wrestling – then after he like just go back to football, see how it works out. So I was like, okay. Then my dad told me to stick to football. And then that's pretty much it. My sophomore year, for my freshman year, just Tony Leona and my dad. Okay. All right. Then we'll move on a little fast forward a couple of months. We'll go with that. Um, before actually being a player on his team, what? were some things you heard about Coach Self because you said earlier that once you got into the program, you right. started like, knowing like how historic of a of a program it is. Like, what were some things you heard about Coach Self that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this guy is going to be my coach pretty soon. Uh, I heard that he was a, uh, you know, uh, what's I don't know how to say it. Not a bad coach, but like a coach that will work you to the max. Like, he'll, like, punish you and stuff like that if you did something wrong. So, me and the freshman team, like, watching them practice and, like, they'll, they'll get in trouble. Like, they'll start running or doing up-downs or, like, doing punishments. I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> You're like, I, I don't think I want to do football anymore, Dad, yeah, after what uh, I just saw. Uh, uh, I was like, I don't know about that. We got another comment. Gonna share really, really quick, man. It's Oscar Siffler saying, "Follow your dreams, big man. Your dad is so proud of you." Big shout out to Oscar for tuning in. Thank you so much. And also, don't forget, keep sharing this video so more family and friends of Daniel can watch him and just give him a quick, quick congratulations and just give him some encouraging words for his time at UNLV. Um, so when you would see the players like kind of, you know. Going through that discipline with Coach Self, you know, he's known to be a very disciplined coach, but at the same yeah. time, a great football head. I mean, a, a great mind in, in football. Yeah. And you see in the results of the program, did it kind of motivate you to, like, be part of his program? Doesn't matter if there was discipline issues, like, like I'm not saying discipline issues, but, like, there was those consequences in case you messed up. Yeah, I, I like, I accepted it. I was like, you know what? It's a perk about being football, and like you have to get disciplined, you got punished sometimes, and it just makes you better overall. Okay, now that you were in this program, obviously he was your head coach, and you have a bunch of assistant coaches. And what was your schedule like when you schedule. were on his team? Like on the uh, obviously during the season, it was just practice, practice, practice. But how did he keep you guys in shape, or how did? He keep you keep you guys motivated and get you prepared for the next season. All right, it started off from the morning. We we'll go into we had a we had a morning class at six o'clock in the morning. Weightlifting, it will weightlift six to seven. Then we we'll go home, and that was Monday, Wednesday. That was Monday and Wednesdays. Then Tuesdays and Thursdays was weightlift for a little bit. And after weightlifting for like 30 minutes, you go into the, the basketball gym and uh, do full work and like sprint stuff like that. That was in the morning. That was Wednesday. That was Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that was the one week right there. Then during lunch, he would actually take us in his classroom during lunch and watch film on the other team during lunch, pretty much. And like you would just watch film, teaching us stuff like that. Then it was after school. So it was a wow, lot. That's. That's dedication without a doubt. That's yeah. a lot of how much he cares about his program. And like, it's it's something great to hear that how he's such a, there's a reason why he's such a successful coach. You know, it's 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 awesome. And it's great that another product of his program is not going to play at another 
school to chase chase his dreams and also get an education and that's you daniel we got more comments coming in man i gotta show them to you you know because you got a quite a good following here let's let's go with oscar gonzalez saying your dad is so proud of you follow your dreams big guy and also christina once again saying i'm so proud of you nephew always hold your head up high and know that we're all cheering for you we all love you and also Ariel Negron saying, uh, Negron, I, I don't I don't want to say if it's in English or Spanish, yeah. said, dude, I'm your uncle, Ariel. I'm so proud of you. Keep it up. Love you, brother. So when you see stuff like that, man, how does it make you feel that you have that big support group just going, like, being behind your back everywhere you go, and especially now at UNLV? It makes you feel good about myself. And, like, for, like, not that I'm the only one doing it and stuff like that. It feels like this feels good, like having your old family member having your back and just they're there for you if you need them and stuff like that. Oh, that's awesome. And like we, like I said, I support you because you're out there going to yeah. be a great, great representation for the Valley. Uh, but going back to the football program, after you saw how dedicated a coach, Coach Self was, what were your impressions on Brawley's program and tradition? You're like, man, like we're Brawley. What's up? Bring it on. We're Brawley. Yeah. What's up? Um, after the first couple of weeks of like under his like under his coaching, I felt better. Like I felt better in shape. I felt better like overall football player. I see my my other teams doing it too. I uh, just felt like after what game was it? Our junior year, after we lost to Still Cannon 13-14, I think my 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 junior year, yeah, 13-14 lost to Still Cannon, and then being a higher ranked than us, and we're kids from the valley, and like. They're San Diego. I think they're like Division Two, Division One at that point. And us Valley kids almost beating them. That like really set the tone of my mindset. Where like they're just other kids. They're just other teenagers. Like what's the difference between all of us? Stuff like that. Like they're living teenagers like us. They they eat, sleep, all the good things like us. There's no difference between us. Yeah, that's true. I had a previous guest on the show saying that. That guy across the field, he puts on his pants the same way you do. Yeah. You know, and, and they got to do the same thing, but it depends who's going to come up on top at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, it makes sense, man. We're all human. We're, we're And, like, you – now you live, breathe, and do football every single day yeah. now. And uh, we got more comments here, man. Dude, I'm telling you, man, you, you got a great following here. Rosa Caloca saying, love you, Danny. Also, Victoria Izquierdo Border saying, hang in there. You got this. So, Vedia, Caloca saying, we're super proud parents. That is your mom right there. Also, Rosa, once again, saying proud. Congratulations. Fernando Caloca saying, keep up the great work, nephew. You got this. Remember, draft night at my house. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, remember that. I hope I get invited to that. Hopefully. We'll see what happens. So, hey, Fernando, if you make a draft party, I want to be there so I could see him go into the next level. And also, Daniel Rodriguez saying, continue to chase your dreams, man. Put in that work. Just a lot of great, great supports here on the show for you, Daniel. Just mm. feel so good to see that. But we, we mentioned how your schedule was and just basically your determination, your dedication into football. But if you could go back to when you got that call or when they told you, hey, you're going up to varsity, what was your what was going through your mind when you heard those words like, bro, or like, hey, Daniel, you're going up into varsity and you're going to play the best football here in the Imperial Valley? Uh, it wasn't actually a call. It was actually after we had a – it's all over YouTube where our JV team had a fight with um, Central, the Central yep. JV team. And we were on the bus on the way home. We got off the bus. We were heading back, returning to our gear. So then he told me, Javier Martinez, Jacob Ramirez, I think us three, to keep our pads. And we are like, for what? They were, like, confused, right? He said mm – -hmm. I practiced tomorrow. I was like, oh my God. Then we just, we got all half, got jumping around. And we just, we went home that, that same day, called, like, told our parents they're all happy for us and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's cool, dude. Like, I always hate to say, like, if you got an actual call, because that's basically how they do it. Yeah. In the, in the pro level, like NFL, when you get drafted, they call you, MLB, oh, yeah. they call you. You know what I mean? But yeah, that, that's, a good, that's a good story. Like, I can't, I wish I could imagine how your face was. You're like, why do I need to? keep my pads like why <laughs> you're going you got practice tomorrow oh dang i'm in varsity now <laughs> no well that's great and it turned out to be a really really great decision and one without a doubt a very smart one 
because he helped out the the Brawley program with, yeah. without a doubt. And now we have keep mentioning you're going to the next level, man. You're going to the next level, and that's awesome. Uh, but how did the upperclassmen and the assistant coaches and coach self receive you when you joined their squad? Well, at first, there's – Actually, at first, they told me to get some reps as right tackle. Like, as they're walking through, they're like, all right, close, go in there. Me and Javier, so Javier was center at the time. So, you would have your going center, close, going as right tackle, like, as the starting as the starting line. And I was, well, I was getting, I was getting wrecked against my former teammate, Henry Thomas. I remember him. And I was getting wrecked, but it was a great experience. They opened me with open arms. And I remember the next day, the same day we had team dinner. That that was a great team dinner for all the rest of us. They're all they just they just they accepted me as a little brother, pretty much. And then you became the big brother later on, right? Well, I mean, well, I was I was always the tallest one, not gonna lie. Except for me and Casey. Me and Casey were always, always the tallest ones. So yeah. I mean I was a little big brother. <laughs> Okay, so how was your relationship with Casey, like you guys being the tallest players, but him going to the next level at Boise State? Did that motivate you, or did you guys were like, hey, we got to be a team in this or something like that? What was your relationship with him? Um, our relationship was good, uh, me and his parents, stuff like that. And it was it was, it was cool after every game, uh, his parents would come up to me and say, oh, we'll see you in the, in the Boise State uniform too, stuff like that. And I was like, oh, we'll hope and see. So at the, at the time, I was like, let's go. Like, I'm ready. Then when he left, I was all, I was like, okay, so it's my turn now. I have to, like, gear up and be the captain of this team. But we had a great relationship, always laughing, fun, stuff like that. Did Boise State, maybe, did they call you? Were they interested at first? Yeah, they're interested. They're interested. It was Coach um, Brad Bardell. He was interested in me. And I went to some of the camps up there, not up there, but the camps they were hosting. He still give me a call back, but never got that call back. Well, hey, there's it's their loss, man. It's their yeah. loss, you know. They lost a great lineman, and they lost a great player, a great, great guy, and it's their loss, man. You're going to do great things at UNLV. We know that for sure. And once again, more comments here. Fernando Caloca saying you got it. And Richard Vicky Mesa saying it's awesome to see a, a brawly athlete Make it this far. Keep up the good work. I'm pretty sure that's what we're trying to say. And yeah. Aston Martinez saying, I am so proud of you. So, well, they said a heart right there. Is that someone special by any chance? No, it, was, it was one of my – well, she's my best friend. Yeah, she gave me, actually gave me this right here. Okay. This is sad. Oh, it's Cody from Monsters, Inc. No, I like no, I love that movie. I love that guy. <laughs> now, <laughs> moving on to uh, another topic that we have is um what are some things that you enjoyed from coach self and his coaching staff you know we we saw how dedicated he was uh but was there something special that you enjoyed about being one of his players i actually enjoyed like being with him like having fun with them talking to him and also the assistant coaches too my lineman coach um coach van diver he actually I, the last day I was in Brawl, he actually gave me a plate of ribs because that was one of my favorite things he made. So then I was always with, yeah, I was always with um, Coach Van Dever and Coach Self, like talking to them, messing around with them, making them laugh during practice. And yeah, I always had those phone calls with them too. No, well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. But besides that, like if you could top it off, can you say, like with this coaching staff? Uh, what do you think makes it so special for his program to be so competitive and just so successful every single year? Like, what makes him uh, so special? With, with this coaching staff, they're always connected. I always, like, hear stories that all the coaches are all together at Coach Self's house talking about, what happened. like, even until, even up to, like, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. They're always thinking about, like, plans, what to do, what it was next, stuff like that. So I feel like the connection they have and the determination they have to actually have a winning season. That's what they put in the work all together. Okay. What are your favorite memories of you being in a brawl uniform? You know, it could it could it could have been that bus ride after that fight, you got that call, or you got that, you know, that message like, hey, keep your pads, or was there something other moments that uh, you, are your favorite? 
as a brawler, wearing the brawler uniform, probably, I don't really say I have a, like a favorite memory. I have multiple favorite memories. I have a lot of them. Well, my sophomore year going to varsity. Um, not gonna believe, but the Bell game. I actually like the Bell game, even though we like, even though we lost. But I, I had a good. That was a good memory. Played my first ever Bell game. Um, the bus rides, of course, that was funnest. Uh, bus rides are cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably part of the last game. La Jolla. That was a good. That was a good game for me. How is uh, that like? Yeah, how how's that game for you? Like, why is it so memorable for you? It was memorable because it was the last time I ever played with my friends, pretty much. My last time mm-hmm. seeing them, not seeing them, but actually play with them, give their heart out. We had a lot of ups and downs in that game, thinking that we're gonna win and stuff like that. But I mean, everything happens for a reason, right? So yeah, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. You mentioned earlier, like the Bell game, and unfortunately, like, well. You, you didn't win a bell game, yeah. but in your opinion, how was that experience for you as a player? And in your opinion, what makes that rivalry one of the oldest rivalries in America, high school wise? What makes it so special in your opinion? It makes it special because you know, probably and such always love to talk chat to each other. So like, we get like you see like notes and everywhere saying that oh we're gonna do this to you, this stuff that so. Actually, got was like angry like during practice and stuff like that. So we work harder. It was a fun time. Like after we beat um Kaleska, I think it was the last game for Central. After that, we're always so pumped up and like we're always like Central's next, let's go. Stuff like mm-hmm. that. And we're just we're just so happy, so like so energetic at that time. I think uh, the, the big thing that I liked when I saw the Bell game and also after I graduated from Central, basically is how I would see just the signs on the roads. Like when when Brawley yeah. had the bell, like they would like, um, and, and if they played in Brawley, like they would make signs for like Central, you're not taking the bell. Like, hey, you guys go back to Old Central to even come here and same vice versa, you know? Yeah. I think that was pretty funny. It was a whole Valley ride pretty much. It was fun. Especially yeah, with the it, escort sometimes. Until it was fun. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. So we got more comments here. And you talk about those ribs, man. Ariel saying, hey, man, I got some good ribs waiting for you. <laughs> Come to Las Vegas. I'm waiting for him. <laughs> Ken Baker as well, your old English teacher, wishes you well yeah, in, your, in your journey. Love that, uh, Monica saying, Thea is proud of you, Pops. So it's Monty. great family support. Great family support. Now, going into UNLV. How did you – also not just UNLV, we're talking about Boise State, and also you had another school that you committed to. But yeah. when did you start getting on other schools' radar? It was my junior year. My junior year, I had a lot of coaches hit me up, like my was conference, stuff like that. They were talking to me, and, like, I was talking to them. And they nobody pulled a trigger until I was State my late senior year. I mean, it was a good experience, though. Okay. What were your thoughts, though, when you saw that someone and, like, not someone, multiple people were actually looking at you and were interested in having you in their program? Okay. Um, it was during, uh, during my junior year season. They, um, my coach, Van Diver, um, took me to lunch. We had Jack in the Box because we had open lunch. So... We went to lunch, he talked to me, sat down. He was all like, you know, it's a real possibility for you, right? I was like, what do you mean? Playing college ball is a real opportunity for you. Stuff like that. And I was like, really? He was like, especially if you get a full ride. And like, he was just like encouraging me, like go work harder and stuff like that. And like, you got this in your hands, just don't let it go pretty much. Like get on top of your grades and pretty much just keep working hard. And it's paid off. It's paid off. And we've mentioned it. you're at UNLV, you're a rebel, but we said earlier that you can, that you committed to another school, but you're like, you know what? I'm going to UNLV instead. What made it like, what was it about the program at Las Vegas that made you say like, Hey, I want to go here instead. I'm going to be a, a rebel instead. Well, it was actually, um, 
the distance wise, because Idaho is like what sixteen hours away from Brawley, and Las Vegas is only five hours away, and um, Las Vegas being a higher program as a, in my West Conference as Idaho State was in the Big Sky Conference. I mean, just no shame to being out in Idaho State and stuff like that. So uh, it was better for me being closer to home as where my family could actually come over here and stuff like that. And I didn't know, but actually I found remember here in Las Vegas for me. So that's even better for us. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, man. Yeah. Oh. Um, do you picture yourself playing in that new Raider Stadium pretty soon, maybe? I, I'm, I'm excited for it. Me being a big Raider fan, me and my family. It was oh, okay. It makes it even more special, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, imagine if you meet John Gruden, man. What, what would you feel about that, though? I'll say wait for two years. I'll be eligible. <laughs> oh, I like it. I liked it. I like it, man. So you committed and signed in January, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. It was January? Yeah. According to my research, it said January. That's when you signed and committed. Yeah, I signed January. How, how was that process for you, like signing? What were your thoughts coming to your head when you realized you're going to play Division One football? It was it was a blessing, not gonna lie. Like taking all the stress off my family, where they had to pay actually like for school and stuff like that, and like everything was free for me. So it was it was a big accomplishment, big like stress free. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I wrote everything, I felt like everything just released. I'm like, oh, okay, you're good. All you need to do is keep up with your grades and graduate high school. How did the recruiters and the scouts treat you and your family when this was happening? Oh, that was it was beautiful. You came to Las Vegas and we actually went to I forgot what it was called, but it was a resort here in Las Vegas. It was beautiful. It was um they had me and my well, it was supposed to be me and a roommate, another recruit, but I guess they didn't show up. So I was all in the room by myself. And my parents were there in their own room. And they were just <laughs> they was having us food, food, food. And it was great. And we had like great actually where would you go? We went to a, a Raider preview center and like all the Raiders and everything, like not Raiders, but like um, history of the Raiders. And so it was, it was actually pretty cool to experience that. What else did we do? We, my parents had a um, casino. So, you know, that um, we actually went golfing too. Like, I don't golf, but I was trying to hit the ball though. Oh, so, so it was everything. They gave you the whole package, right? Yeah. It kept Man. food, food, food. So what? Uh, so was it the food that made you sign, or was it like the golf? Was it the Raider Stadium? Was it or was it the food? It was actually it was actually the coaches, because as um, I, I signed as an offensive lineman, then they found out I was eligible to play D line too, and they had I had um I had another offer to New Mexico State to play D line, so I was they hit throw like okay. So the moment of D line for the offer, somebody else O line. So actually another player too. Uh the offered uh, Marcus Miller for O line. So I moved to D line and it was just it was just great. They showed my highlight clips right there. Like this is what you did right and stuff like that. Like this is great. So I was just I was there, my parents, they were just watching my own highlight tape. Being, like he was saying all the good things about me and stuff like that. So it felt like the the perfect fit, without a doubt. Yeah. They and now that the now that the Rays are going to be there, it's going to be even a perfect, even more perfect fit, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> so we got more comments here. Just same, same, really, really quick. Uh, Ariel uh, Negron saying, just to let you know, Abuelita Iris and Abuelo Raul are looking out for you. Yeah. Let's make them proud. Yeah. And after that, okay, so hopefully there is a football season because okay. we know COVID, it's going on, you know. I don't know if you heard anything about this season or not, but hopefully there is. They're, they're what, talking, go ahead. Uh, they're talking about um, starting the season where you play like our own conference games or close to like um, who else is like um, changing some games like Utah State, like in the same in the same conference as us, like Boise State, which is like just like a shot up there. Um, San Diego State, San Jose State, and like just close close conference games. Okay. That's yeah. That's what something how other schools are doing, you know, and like yeah. it's it's understandable, just conference only. But what are some goals that you have 
in this upcoming season if if hopefully there is a season? Um, just getting some playing time, like playing the, in the let state and the stadium for Radio Stadium, getting a couple plays in there. You know, even my big dream life. That's pretty much my one goal is to get some get some playing time, get some experience in there. Okay, and get it prepared for maybe the next level, right? Yeah. So you're obviously going to be studying mechanical engineering. You we talked about it before. Like it's all obviously is going to be a different answer, but are you going to pursue the degree and get into the workforce or you going to take uh, a shot at the NFL? Well, it depends cuz if my junior year is actually pretty good and where I'm eligible, I'll probably try to go to the NFL. But if it's all right, and like I'll just think about it cuz if I'm able to if I go to the NFL my junior year, I'll, I'll actually during the off season I'll actually come back to university, finish my degree, and actually finish everything off, and just go back to the NFL pretty much stuff like that. Because I don't want to risk. See if if it does happen where I have a good season my junior year, and I come back to play again and I end up getting hurt, and that's everything's gone for me. So if I have a good season my junior year, I'll I'll pursue my junior year NFL, then come back to school to finish um, the degree. And your dream to play for is the Raiders, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the goal, but I'm always blessed to be on any roster. Okay. And hopefully we never know, and we never know down the road if we have someone and you have a Super Bowl ring in one of your fingers, right? Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. So, man uh, – I have a last couple questions for you. We we breezed through the show. It seems like it was just we barely started, but we're, we're already 40 minutes in. Is there some people that you want to give like a big shout out to or just give them thanks for all their dedication, support, love, hard work for you to accomplish your dream of playing at D1, but also now pursuing your other dream of playing in the NFL? Um, well, based out to my parents because they made big sacrifices for me as a kid. And as of right now, uh, the Broly coaches, coaching staff, Coach Self, Coach Van Diver, Coach Young, Coach um, Coach Tagabon. What was it? Coach Self, Coach Van Diver, Coach Tagabon. Yeah, those, those, those five. And my girlfriend, Ashley Janana Scarlett. Um, I give a big shout out to her because she actually motivated me a lot to actually like keep going, keep practicing, keep working out. Um, well, some friends actually, some of my friends kept like encouraging me. My, name, my friends, um, Jesse James Quiteres and Carlos Alvarado, those people, I'll give a shout, big shout out to those people because we we're actually, we we're actually working out after quarantine, like even during quarantine. We'll be like, hey, let's go work out, and we'll just go work out like with masks on and everything like that. And we would like, we actually didn't care if that was actually quarantine. And the virus is out, so we just kept working out together to the dead left. Um, what about okay? Yeah, go ahead. No, you go for it. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, um, basically, you're you're in quarantine and you're still kind of working out. Like, how is that working for you? You know, like working out by yourself, or like very close, selective people are just working out. How is that for you? Oh, as of right now, I'm working out by myself at the gym they have here. I'm trying to stay away from people because I guess in Vegas they didn't care about wearing masks so i was like all right stay with me pretty much mm -hmm. so yeah so i'm just working out by myself here in um the degree and it's actually pretty nice here so they have a nice gym in there okay last two questions i have in case one other comes up but if you were if there was a little kid looking up to you like i'm pretty sure there is a, a few already but if there was a kid that was looked up to you, what are some advice that you would give him to pursue football or just to get better at football or just to chase his dreams? What's some advice you would give to him? Don't um say don't let being in the valley stop you. Because everybody like I even got like people got overlooked overlooked me because I was from the valley. Like they don't know, like there's like barely any competitions here, they say. And stuff like that, and I like. There's some kids in El Centro where I think they should play like Division One ball too, like stuff like that. And I'll just say, just keep chasing your dreams. Um, don't let anybody tell you any lower than your dream is, and just 
keep parsing stuff like that, get better and better every day. Okay. Now, what would you say to the whole Imperial Valley? Because all the Imperial Valley, they had to play some part in your success. Like people had to go to the football games yeah. and cheer against you for you to get motivated to beat that team or just like the support that they're giving you. What would you say to the Imperial Valley right now? I'll say, well, I'll say thank you for going against me. Some some of them that really boosted me up, especially the central 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 got me good. <laughs> um, I have to thank all the Brawley people. They actually pumped me up during games, and I remember it's funny how you said little kids too, because I remember at halftime we were going to um, I forgot what's called um, what's the score at the next. <laughs> Um, Desert Valley, I'm bad. The, we go to Desert Valley to the classroom at halftime, and we see the pop corner kids saying, Hey, Coloco, like, what's up? I'll be like, I was not actually know my name, but like that. And it was just pump me up. And I'll see some people at Walmart, like, in a casual day, just like, What's up, Mio? I'm proud of you, everything you've done, stuff like that. It was just, and you're like, I don't even know you. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, Thank you, stuff like that. And it was just, it was just great have, having the, the valley on your side, pretty much, well, broadly on your side. Yeah. Well, Daniel, it was a great time to have you on here, man. I'm really excited for you, bro. Um, if there's any questions that came in, let me take a look really quick. Not, not really. Um, I don't know. If this is directed to me or to you. This is Ivan Daniel Barrera. I don't know if you know him. Saying tú eres el compa Kobe. I don't know if do you know that guy or not. I probably do. I just. I was don't know. Yeah, I'm I, I I'm kind of confused on this question, but anyways, uh, Daniel, is there anything else you want to say to close out the show, man? The the floor is yours, microphone is yours. You you take it away, man. Whatever you want to say. Um, I hope the value is doing well because I heard that they're the epicenter of California, having the highest rate. So I hope they're staying safe and staying quarantined, and don't think about yourself, think about your family members too. Because if you go out and have fun, you might get it and bring it back home and your family's suffering with this. So I'll say stay home, stay quarantined, and everything will be over soon, hopefully. I'm pretty sure it is. Huh? And just spend time with your family, with your loved ones as of right now, because you never know when they're gone. Yeah. I'll was, I was close on that. Awesome words, man. You could have said it better yourself, man. And we hopefully see you in a UNLV uniform pretty soon in this fall. And if they move it around or something, we just hope that you're able to be on that football field representing Brawley, representing the Imperial Valley, representing your family. And we're just super excited for you. I'm super excited for you. You know, I you got my full support, you know, and anything you need, man, I'm here for you. And just you got me on Facebook. You got my email now. And my email has my phone number. Anything you need, brother, I'm here for you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, brother. Take care, and we'll see you on the next one, and be safe out there, and obviously you taking your precautions, but keep taking your precautions, and we'll see yeah. you on the next one, okay? All right. All right. So that was Daniel Caloca from Brawley UNLV Commit, and just want to say thank you, everyone, to tune in to the show. Once again, Gil couldn't be with us tonight, but Daniel was such a great, great person to interview. We're so excited for him. We're so happy for them. Once again, a quick shout-out to our sponsors that we have here on the show. The Politaqueria, visit them at either location at 1573 West Main Avenue in El Centro inside of the Valley Plaza or at 1101 Pauline Avenue in Calexico for the best tacos, tortas, burritos, and micheladas in the Imperial Valley. And our last sponsor is Ivy Floor Expression 760-222-7897 or online at ivyflowerexpressions.com. So make sure any flower needs, Ivy Floor Expressions. Once again, thank you to everyone who tuned in. Uh, it was a great, great show, and we look forward to you seeing you again on Thursday for Coach Tony Gonzalez. But tomorrow as well, we're going to have Debatiendo on the Alta Deportes, uh, the broadcast team, the voices of Aguilas and Mexicali in Spanish. So without a doubt, it's going to be so, so much fun. We'll see you all tomorrow. Please, everyone, stay safe. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.